Okay, uh, let's finish up our lecture on marine science. This will be lectures three and four, history of marine, marine science and tools in oceanography. So history of marine science. If we look at uh, historical marine science, the ancient explorations from 5000 BC to 800 AD, um, Egyptians were the first, uh, had the first recorded sea voyage at about 3200 BC. Following the Egyptians were the Phoenicians, and they established the first trade routes through the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, open up the map in your book and look for the Mediterranean Sea. How did they uh, use these trade routes? Uh, they used navigation uh, method was the use of stars. Following the Phoenicians were the Polynesians, and they navigated through the open ocean, and here you could see uh, the route that the Polynesians took between Hawaii and and uh, some of the smaller Pacific Islands there it's kind of a triangular route and then the Greeks of course they developed complex maps including latitude and longitude system that we kind of see today on our maps latitude and longitude and we'll, we will be expl exploring that more with the globes that we're going to use in class so as you can see, they uh, viewed the Earth as round and not flat. In the Middle Ages, the Middle Ages were called the Dark Ages, and they last from about 800 to 1400 AD. And basically, scientific discovery was suppressed throughout Europe due to political viewpoints. In the 790 to 1100 AD, you had the Vikings, and the Vikings... Uh, global warming allowed for exploration and trade routes and they developed complex vessels. The Chinese capitalized on, on vessels and they also invented the magnetic compass but their vessel designs were used a central rudder and watertight compartments for flotation and storage. From 1400 to 1700 there are the European voyages of discovery. Vasco da Gama, uh, he was the first expedition, he did the first expedition around the Cape of Good Hope to India, and basically this allowed for faster trade routes. Then you had Christopher Columbus, 1469 to 1524, and he discovered what we consider the New World. And then you have Vespucci, 1454 to 512, he was the first to recognize South America as a continent, unlike Columbus. And Vespucci, um, America comes from his name. Then there was Balboa in the 1500s. He was the first person European to sail the Pacific by crossing over the Panama. And then you had Magellan in 1519. He was the first person to, accelerate, to sail around the world. And then Sir Francis Drake, uh, he was the second to circumnavigate uh, the world. And then truly came the birth of marine science in 1700 to 1900. James Cook was the first scientific, uh, led the first scientific ocean expedition. And he invented the chrono chronometer in 1735, and the chronometer is a clock that works accurately on the ocean. United States exploring expeditions, you have the Wilkes expedition, which proved the existence of Antarctica, and it also gathered specimens of flora and fauna, basically plants and animals, from Antarctica and throughout the Pacific. Then you have Matthew Murray, uh, he published the physical geography of the sea and described global wind and current patterns which made sailing more efficient. And we'll look at uh, wind and current patterns later in the year when we get into physical oceanography. And then, of course, you have Charles Darwin in 1831. Uh, he is the father of evolution and biology. He studied coral reef growth, and he was the first to suggest that coral, re coral uh, grew in upward motion, so it grew from the ground up. He also proposed that there were seafloor sinks, and uh, because he's the father of evolution, proposed the theory of natural selection, the driving theory behind evolution, the driving, pro driving process there. 
Then in 1872, you have the Challenger Expedition. The Challenger Expedition mapped the seafloor. It discovered the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and the Marianas Trench. Discovered organi organisms in the deepest parts of the ocean. And it cataloged 715 new genera and 4,717 4, new species of organisms. 20th century marine science, you had the German Meteor Expeditions in 1925. It established the pattern of ocean water circulation and it mapped the Atlantic seafloor. In 1931, you had the Atlantis Expedition. It was the first ship designed exclusively for marine science. It confirmed the existence of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And then in 1951, you had the Challenger 2. And basically, it measured the depths of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. And it found the deepest part of the ocean at 10,838 meters, called the Challenger Deep. Our last lecture, lecture four, marine science technology. Marine science technology, basically you have submersibles and self-contained diving units. The advantage of hand-led delicate samples and direct observations, basically you had uh, submersible types. The bathysphere was a steel sphere, oxygen circulated via an umbilical to the surface. So it was an air tube that went from the the sphere up into the surface and the disadvantage was that its movement was restricted to uh, up and down motion because the sphere itself was attached to a cable so you had horizontal motion but you did not have any vertical motion I lie you had ver yeah horizontal motion but you did not have any vertical motion the bathyscaphe is a sphere that was attached to a large float almost like a blimp there was no umbilical to the surface, so it allowed for horizontal movement. Um, it was the deepest diving of all submersible. And here you can see the bathysphere triest, which made it all the way down to the Challenger Deep at 10,900 meters. Then you have deep diving submersibles. This is modern day technology. Um, a lot of these uh, submersibles were uh, today uh, could be contributed to the work done by Dr. Sylvia Earle. Uh, these were the types of submersibles that she uh, developed four companies for in creating. Uh, you saw her TED talk in the beginning of the class. Uh, these are less fragile than others, more maneuverable, equipped with robotic arms, and they cannot go, go as deep due to the acrylic sphere. And we'll talk about pressure later on when we get to uh, the physical part of oceanography. Self-contained diving units contain the hard hat diving. Um, basically, if you, there's a little comic there, but it, it was an air supplied from surface through a hose and a heavy end tied to the surface. It was very heavy. And then you had the Flues Scuba, and that contained recirculated pure oxygen in a tank, but it can't be used deeper than 10 meters due to the pressure exerted on you when you go 10 meters into the ocean. Today's modern scuba gear uh, uh, used today is Castillo scuba, and it used compressed air. It allowed for deeper and longer dives used by divers today, and it was lightweight and easily used. You also have things called ROVs and AUVs, electronic navigation, and satellites, which are all used today in modern oceanography. An ROV is a remote-operated vehicle. So these are small unmanned submarines or subtype machines. Uh, they often contain video cameras, have some sort of umbilical to the surface, whether it be some type of uh, cord, uh, rubber or metal. Uh, they use to, uh, this, this type of equipment, the ROV, was used to help find the Titanic wreckage in the cold waters of the Atlantic. Then you have the autonomous underwater vehicle. It was an untethered ro robotic device. It can follow a pre-programmed path. No manpower is needed. And basically these AUVs are used to collect data. Types of navigation. You have electronic navigation. Sailor used uh, to use the stars for navigation. But now with Loran, long range navigation, you can use radio transmitters. So it's based on radio signal transmitters. And if you think of on the electromagnetic spectrum, 
radio waves have, could travel great distances. They have long wavelengths. Think of radio stations and how far they could tra transmit their signals. So you can determine your position with two signals. Um, the accuracy is within a few meters, um, not accurate when far from shore, and the method is being phased out due to uh, new advances in marine science technology. You have global positioning systems, GPS. Um, this is slowly phasing out Loran. It's based on a system of orbiting satellites in outer space, and it can work everywhere in the ocean. And it gives you an accuracy of within one to two meters of where you are located. That's it for our marine science lecture, Unit 1 lectures. Uh, our test will be very soon, so please start studying.